is a general overview of factors sometimes mentioned by cultivators who aim to optimize alkaloid, particularly DMT, production in Mimosa tenuiflora, also known as Mimosa hostilis, under hydroponic conditions. Note that concrete, peer-reviewed research on this exact topic is extremely limited. Most of the points below come from a mix of horticultural principles, anecdotal experience, and knowledge of related species. None of these methods are guaranteed, and actual results may vary widely. Additionally, cultivating Mimosa tenuiflora specifically for the extraction of DMT may be restricted or illegal in your region. Always check your local laws. Key considerations for hydroponic cultivation of Mimosa tenuiflora. 1. Nutrient solution and pH. Why it matters, hydroponic systems rely entirely on a nutrient solution to supply everything the plant needs. The concentration and balance of macronutrients, NPK, and micronutrients can influence secondary metabolite production. General guidance. Maintain a slightly acidic pH, typically around 5.5 to 6.0. This range is often recommended for many tropical species in hydroponics. Provide adequate nitrogen, N, for robust growth. However, some anecdotal reports for DMT-containing plants suggest that moderate to high nitrogen levels can support higher alkaloid production. Ensure proper levels of micronutrients, iron, magnesium, zinc, etc., to avoid nutrient deficiencies that could hamper growth and secondary metabolite synthesis. 2. Light intensity and photo period. Why it matters, plants need sufficient light for photosynthesis, which is the foundation for energy production and subsequent synthesis of secondary metabolites like alkaloids. General guidance. Mimosa tenuiflora originates in regions with intense sunlight. In hydroponics, consider high-intensity grow lights, LED or HPS, that mimic strong natural sunlight. Provide a long photo period, e.g., 14 to 16 hours of light per day, if the goal is maximizing vegetative growth. Some growers experiment with shorter or varied photo periods to induce mild stress that might boost alkaloid production, but this is anecdotal. 3. Temperature and humidity. Why it matters, Mimosa tenuiflora is native to subtropical-slash-tropical climates and thrives in warm conditions. General guidance. Maintain daytime temperatures in the 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, 77 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit range, with a slight drop at night if possible. Keep relative humidity moderate, 40, 60%, but ensure good airflow to prevent fungal or bacterial issues in a hydroponic setup. 4. Root Zone Conditions and Oxygenation Why it matters, in a hydroponic system, the roots are continuously or intermittently exposed to a water-based nutrient solution. Proper oxygenation helps support root health and metabolism. General Guidance Use an air stone or other oxygenation method to keep dissolved oxygen levels high. Avoid root rot by keeping the water temperature in the 18 to 22 degrees Celsius, 64 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, range if possible. Very warm reservoir temps can promote pathogens. 5. Stress induction. Used carefully. Why it matters. In some plants, mild environmental or nutritional stress can prompt increased production of defensive secondary metabolites, e.g. alkaloids. Examples of potential mild stressors. Slightly reduced watering intervals in soil-grown plants or short, dry, cycles in certain hydro systems. This is more challenging in a continuous hydroponic system, but might be mimicked by adjusting solution timing in an ebb and flow setup. Incremental nutrient restrictions, e.g., lowering nitrogen or phosphorus slightly for a short period. Too much restriction, however, can harm overall growth. Fluctuating temperature, allowing brief temperature shifts within the safe range may induce stress response. Caution, overdoing stress can stunt growth and reduce total biomass, possibly resulting in lower overall alkaloid yield. Six, growing duration and harvest timing. Why it matters, in Mimosa tenuiflora, the root bark is most frequently used for alkaloid extraction, especially DMT. Alkaloid levels can vary with plant age. General guidance. Mimosa tenuiflora typically needs two plus years to develop substantial root bark in soil. In hydroponics, robust root growth might occur faster, but it still requires patience. Consider harvest timing. Some anecdotal sources suggest that alkaloid content may be higher in older, more established root bark. Carefully examine root thickness and bark maturity before harvest. 7. Genetics and plant selection. Why it matters, genetic variation can play a larger role in alkaloid production than any single environmental factor. General guidance. Start with seeds or cuttings from plants reputed to have good alkaloid profiles, though verifying that data can be tricky. If you're able to grow multiple plants, select the most vigorous or promising individuals and propagate them further. 8. Record keeping and adjustments. Why it matters, secondary metabolite production can be unpredictable, so detailed records help identify what works best. General guidance. Track EC, electrical conductivity, of the nutrient solution, pH, temperature, lighting schedule, and growth stages in a log. Make incremental changes, one variable at a time, and monitor how the plant responds in growth and health. 
Keep notes on root mass development over time and observe any visual signs of stress or deficiency.